Hello, and it's Friday, so we're gonna do a media hack. I know I promised a lot of cinema, and I only delivered one cinema. Uh, but, and, and I did a graphic novel last time, but I'm gonna do another graphic novel this time. I went to the lovely tropical paradise of Burlington, Vermont last week, and I went on a spending spree at a comic book store that was there and it was amazing. Um, it was the coolest, coolest, coolest place ever. I got into a great conversation with the guy behind the counter about how, um, you know, he, he's, he was funny. He's like, you know, I get really mad at like, you know, sci-fi shows that kind of mess things up. But for some reason, I don't have a problem with Battlestar Galactica sci-fi. And I thought to myself, like, what? What problems do you have with the science of Battlestar Galactica? They're, they're not really that... It's, it's not that far-fetched. It really isn't. It's, it's a lot like Firefly, where I believe that that's probably what interstellar, interstellar space travel will look like. It will look like cowboys. And if it's not, I'm going to be really disappointed. At any rate, um, it, was, it was very cool. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And upstairs from it, it was just a comic book shop. It's right there on Church Street. If you go to Burlington, Vermont, um, you just go to Church Street. And it's, it's right there on the corner. And upstairs is a really great gaming room um, that had a lot of Warhammer stuff. Uh, an entire section um, dedicated to just tabletop games, which I wanted to just like. I Honestly, I was like, I'm going to shoplift every single game um, and I didn't and I was very proud of myself uh, and and it was kind of heartbreaking because I love tabletop games but my husband won't play tabletop games with me the closest I can get to an RPG with him is um, Doctor Who Opoly which just bums me out entirely um, but you know uh, if, if you're into tabletopping games uh, they had an entire wall of just Magic the Gathering cards and I think they actually had a teaser set of the 2015 um, core set out so they they're awesome uh and everybody there was really really nice i was psyched because as a woman sometimes you walk into these places and you're like oh god am i gonna be treated like i'm stupid and everybody was completely chill and awesome and nice and i think that that's part of the whole you know this is new england and we don't play those kind of silly games up here which is why i'm not a big world traveler i don't i don't understand people if you're from new england there's literally no reason to ever leave new england we have lovely brilliant places and cities and forests and trees and hobbits and you don't need to you don't need to go other places other places are terrible like if you want europe we have quebec it's right by there you go you're all set so at any rate the book, um, I bought two books. Um, this one is, it's called Beautiful Scars, and it is by uh, D.S. Uh, Talon and E.G. Thompson. And I'm not familiar with either of those names, and I apologize if they're big deal names. I apologize. I don't know. It came out in March 2014, so I'm not that late to the party on this game. Um, this was lovely. Uh, it was honestly one of the cuter, sweeter stories I've read in my entire life. It's about a... a female author starts with her and she has a book that just came out that day and she's going to show it to her grandfather because her grandfather was a big influence to her growing up as a child so here's her as a little child on a, on a train in, in England going to go see her grandfather and she's like I don't want to go see my grandfather he's scary for some reason he has a scar on his head and she's like ah and runs away and and then this this was a little bit weird and kind of like not genuine dialogue um, she's like, oh, I'm going to have a scar on my knee. Oh, I'm so upset. You are eight. Scars are cool when you are eight. I'm, I'm old. Scars are cool when you're my age. So I don't know what she was talking about. But then the grandfather then proceeds to tell her about scars that he has all over his body. And the, the, the metaphor being that the scars aren't the, the scars themselves that are beautiful. It's the memory that they carry and the emotional import behind the scar and, and how you got it, which was really really wonderful. The great part, the part that is really grand, is as he tells the story of getting the scars, you can also see on the bottom there's a mythical fantasy tale going on where you have the literal translation of, of him in a, you know, like soapbox derby, whatever, I don't know what they're called in Britain, and then down underneath there's you know, the woodsman and the princess battling, you know, Scars the Troll. And then you, of course, find out Scars the Troll isn't a bad guy, he's a good guy. Uh, and that wasn't really much of a spoiler, though. It, it was an interesting, great read. I loved it. Beautiful, uh, you know, artwork. It, it's a little bit more um, literal 
uh, artwork interpretation than my last one, which was Eddie Campbell's um, recreation of Neil Gaiman's short story, The Truth is a Cave in the Black Mountains. His, his artwork was, it, it's just a little bit more, not abstract, because, you know, it's a short person taking a guy out to a cave, and there you go, but he felt very free to use a lot like different types of mediums and he's very obviously at one point working in crayon and then working in watercolor and then working in oils. This is all just very straightforward it looks like. Just traditional comic book style and there's nothing wrong with that. It's great and I really love it. Um, but the story got a little confusing because we we end the whole grandpa telling her about the scars here at halfway through the book. So I, as a normal reader who can feel the amount of pages, go, oh, uh oh, where are we going? And then she learns her lesson about scars being, you know, important and valuable as part of her life. And you think, okay. And then here, maybe one third away from the end, we find out she's going to his funeral. So that's a little alarming. And I was like, oh, we got a lot of this book to go through. And kind of a uh, main important character is dead. Uh, and then we go into the book that she wrote. So it's kind of metatextual. You know, you're, you're traveling through the creation of the book that you're now going to enjoy at the end. But what's really glorious is uh, I don't know how these two, um, the, the two creators, Ta Talon and Thompson, got people to do this. Or if it was just, you know, hey, we're, we're going to do this. Somebody wrote a really cute, you know, fairy tale. And then they got a whole bunch of different people to illustrate it in their own particular style. And this one's my favorite because this looks like the little girl who was in, um, if you watched the Lizzie Bennett Diaries on, on YouTube, uh, she looks exactly like um, Lydia. So I thought that was kind of neat. And I think she's also in the Game of Thrones update now. Um, not, not the real Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones stuff on YouTube. Uh, the Starks, the prom is coming. And we have really nice... Very cool. I like this one because it's like, you know, here's the princess and you can see the evil of the woods coming at her and it's 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 really, really beautiful. Um, the artwork is lovely. The book is grand. Once again, I get, I get, it smells like crayons, which makes me happy. But the best part is, and, and this is kind of cute for some reason, it just reminded me of um, Murakami's work. I, I don't know why it just looks like it. But the coolest part is, and this, this is to me, this is the coolest part because I'm a nerd. It starts with, this book belongs to. And I'm tempted to write my name in it, but at the same time, I'm also tempted to not because it is a really nice graphic novel. Now, granted, I'm not, I don't, I don't donate my graphic novels and I never sell my graphic novels. I hang on to everything. I hang on to everything. Um, but, and you've seen my disgusting library. And that's not even the library. I have an entire cellar full of books. I never get rid of anything. Um, but at the same time, I also believe that you shouldn't foul with things. Uh, however, I, I probably at some point will take my special purple fountain pen and write Anne-Marie Donahue. Anne-Marie George Donahue. So, I recommend it. Beautiful scars. It's wonderful. Um, it's a little on the pricey side. Well, no, it's not. It's like $19.99. Um, uh, 20 bucks for a really good story and some beautiful artwork is a good trade, so I wouldn't call it on the pricey side, but I would not go above 20 on this. Um, it's a great story, beautiful artwork, but, you know, $24.99, you start to ask a little bit much of me, so I'm cheap. All right, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.